Bond. James Bond. I mean, every kid has a dream wants to work on a Bond film on some level, so... You think I'd leave this in the hands of the British? I'm the first American to ever be an editor on a Bond movie, so bringing me over here and letting me have free reign, which they really did, it was a process of me learning about Lee and his way of doing things. He, he does a lot of cutting in the camera. He knows what he's doing. He's very focused. Um, and what I try to do is take that footage and, and make it a little bit stylized. Christian, my editor, has been cutting it very fast and very, um, very uh, progressively modern, and I use that, that phrase advisedly because I'm always a little hesitant myself about that kind of music video approach to, um, to action. I think one of the things that I like about editing the most is that I like to keep the camera moving as much as possible because if it's moving all the time and, and there's, a, there's a certain flow, for a very long time, I think, uh, before, truly, I think, before MTV came out, the theory behind editing was that the best edited film was a, a film where you never saw the edits. I think that that theory is past gone. You know, I think films like The Matrix and John Woo films and, and, and Michael Bay just, it's, it's a flurry. It's a flurry of, of eye candy. I wanted to bring that kind of editing style into the Bond thing to kind of make it a little bit more hip, I guess, is, is as close as I can get. When I started doing that, you know, th this family has been together for 40 years because they had been doing it a certain way for so long. And the new style of editing with the speed ramps and all that stuff, they were a little thrown back. And then when we started putting the movie together and seeing how people were reacting to it, they really, really warmed up to it and it became a lot of fun. What we didn't want to end up with was just another car chase where the cars roared along and had squealing tires and they're on ice for God's sake. We're going to try and avoid all these cliches. But um, we're using a device known as speed ramping, which is uh, no stranger to television commercials, music videos, or even some movies now. This shot was shot at this speed, running across the glacier and then revealing um, the two cars in the ice. and then they came closer and went out of frame. You uh, increase and decrease the speed of the film at alarming rates, very fast, very slow, according to however you want to use it. And it's usually to do with music or to do with the pace of things. It's all very nice and, and it shows geography very well, but it's also very time consuming. So I get ideas like this. So I will high speed across the glacier field, slow down to show what we have going and then and then um, keep it going as fast as possible just because it's a... Uh... I'm not a big advocate of cutting just for the sake of cutting. Um, if a shot, if there's a crane shot that, that takes, you know, nine or ten feet to complete, uh, let it ride out because it's a beautiful shot. There's no reason to interfere with what I believe was the director's vision of how he wanted that to happen. There's no reason just to cut for cutting sake because that just makes for confusion, number one. And number two, I, I, um, it's my feeling of it's, it's a way of getting out of a problem. And if, there is not, if there's no problem in a shot, then why not stay on it? The only science for action editing is story. You'll watch films that have action sequences and, and there won't be any really story involved. It's just car chase. When I look at the footage, I like to think about what is the reasoning behind why this car went there. This represents a three times around uh, chase, which became too long, so we made it two. We decided that Bond would use his invisible car at this time. So when Zhao started revving up his engine and going, and just as, as Zhao is about to hit him, he makes it invisible. Um, but before that, you see an insert of, of um, metal pegs coming out of the tires. And he rolls up the side of a, the back of a wall. And Zhao comes off and 40 feet in the air and lands and, and dies. And the car appears almost vertical on the wall. Uh, it reappears and then rolls back down and goes back downstairs again. So that was the death sequence that was come up with um, way after the beginning of, of shooting and, and right towards the end of editing.